It is once more and again that we have indeed been blessed by the Almighty God of Heaven. I'm grateful that God has granted us yet another opportunity to come into His house that we might worship, that we might praise His holy and His divine name. It certainly is good to see each and every one of you here with us this afternoon, and we hope that you have come. None of the purpose in mind than to worship and to magnify the name of our God. Amen. God is worthy, worthy and he is deserving of all of our praise. Amen. And certainly if we grant unto God what he is due with us, he will be well pleased. Amen. If you are here this afternoon and not a member of the body of Jesus Christ, you are indeed our honored guest. We're glad to have you here amongst the saints Amen. that meet on the narrow lane. Amen. We understand from this morning that we are a part yeah. of a very special organization. Amen. We're part of something that originated in the mind of God and that's Amen. something to be proud about. Amen. That's something wonderful. That is something that transcends man's imagination of accomplishment. Yeah. When you are part of that which God had on his mind even before he said, let there be light. Definitely. He was planning to bring the church into existence. Yeah. We are privileged tonight Amen. to have spiritual sense enough yeah. to have said yes to Jesus yeah. and to become a part of his church. Yeah. That's the reason why we're glad that you did. We're going to give you the same opportunity to have the same joy that we have being a part of the church yes. that you can read about in the Bible. Amen. So we're glad that you're here and hope that you'll study with us attentively. And uh, upon the conclusion of this message, yes. we hope that you make Jesus your choice. Yes. Stand with me, please. Luke chapter 15. And as was read into your hearing, beginning at verse number 20. I'm going to read verses 20. Through 24 solo. And I ask you to join in with me with the reading of verses 25 through 27. The Bible says, And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said unto his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it. Let us eat and be merry. Verse 24, with me please, to 27. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. They began to be merry. Now his eldest son was in the field. And as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the servants asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fat calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing unto those who are the readers, truly unto those who are the heeders, his holy and his divine will. Just a few moments tonight, I want to talk to you from the subject, the difference between a house and a home. Amen. I want to use this very familiar text yeah. to talk about the difference yeah. between a house and a home. This parable is one of the most well-known among parables because it shows forth unto us an aspect of life to which we can all relate. Right. Anyone who 
is of any age has experienced in one way or another somebody leaving the house or the family of God. Amen. We have experienced, if we've been here for any length of time, yes. somebody leaving the Lord and getting themselves into a bad situation yes, sir. and then having to come back home. Yeah. When we look at this particular parable, we see a picture of a loving father who allows his son to have the freedom that he desires. And then he rejoices when the boy comes back home. Yes. We want to look tonight at another lesson that can be learned from this particular parable. For I believe that many times members of the church stray away from the church yes. because members don't know the difference between a house and a home. Right. Hear me tonight when I tell you that there is technically no definitive difference yeah. between a house and a home. Which means if you were to look in the dictionary, the definition for house and the definition for home yeah. would be synonymous. Yeah. But as we look at it from a social standpoint, if we look at it from the way we look at houses and homes, we can tell that there is a significant difference. For instance, when we talk about a home, we're talking about a place of warmth and welcomeness. We're talking about a place where a person feels welcome, a place where you feel wanted. In a home, you can be yourself. In a home, you can, as we say, let your hair down and relax a little because, because you're at home. At home, you feel comfortable. At home, you feel safe and secure. That's our definition of what it means to be at home. But now in a house, According to the definition that we are going to use this afternoon, a house is just a place where you come and stay a while. A house is a place where you just eat, sleep, and lodge. In a house, there's nothing to give you a warm sense of welcome and warmth. There's nothing to give you the sense of enthusiasm to make you hurry up and want to get back to home. When, when you're dealing with a house, you're just dealing with a place where you live for a specific amount of time. Right. Well, what we're looking at tonight is that in the church of God, which is also in scripture called the house of God, it ought to be a home-like atmosphere on, existing among us. Yeah. What are you saying, Tillman? In God's house, yeah. people ought to feel wanted and cared about. In God's house, people ought to be able to be themselves. In God's house, there ought to be a concern for the loss. In God's house, there ought to be love and acceptance when folk leave us and then have sense enough to come back to us. Oh, there is a difference between a house and a home. Let's look at some things tonight that tell us the reason why people leave us. And we may discover that it's because we have not conjured up a home-like atmosphere. Now, that's not the case in every case, because even when we look at why this boy left home, it didn't have anything to do with him not feeling comfortable where he was. Sometimes folk just want to do what they want to do. And that's what we learn from this text. Look at verse number 13. The Bible, in verse 12 rather, the Bible tells us here in this very text that uh, this younger son said to his father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. In that far country, this boy wasted his living. 
with riotous living.